Right now, hurricane hunters are getting closer and getting a closer look at Hurricane Sally. This is video of the plane's Miss Piggy as it moves over the Category 1 storm. The National Weather Service predicts Sally could bring historic life-threatening flooding to parts of Mississippi, Alabama, and the Florida Panhandle. The problem is that storm, much like Harvey, is so slow moving, just creeping along toward the Gulf Coast. And let's go right now to Jay Gray, who's in Mobile, Alabama, where they're bracing for the storm. Hey there, a fitting rain right now. We have seen some wind gusts, nothing significant, and no real chop on the bay at this point, but that's all going to change dramatically as we continue to move through the day into the evening and really through the overnight hours here. It is going to continue to rain for the better part of two days in this area. You combine that rain, which could be as much as two feet of rain in some areas, with a storm surge expected to reach a, a peak of 11 feet in some areas, and, and that's just too much water too fast. Early bands of the storm bringing some of that rain, but again, it's going to intensify as we move forward. The time for getting ready just about over at this point, even though the storm is creeping slowly toward the coastline, the problem is going to be that it's going to linger. It's going to cause what the National Hurricane Center warns could be historic flooding across the region. That's the latest right now here in Mobile, Alabama. I'm Jay Gray. Back to you. All right, thank you, Jay. And let's continue our coverage now with our meteorologist, Jeff Gerber, standing by with the very latest on Sally's track. And Sally is spinning uh, just south of Mobile Bay, and that's where they're expecting to make landfall sometime, looks like early tomorrow morning. Here is radar, and you can see the heavy bands of rain sliding into parts of southern Alabama, the Florida Panhandle, also parts of southern Mississippi, uh, getting those this periods of heavy rain off and on, and could continue to do that for the next, say, 36 hours or so, at least through the around the coast there. So that's why they're expecting to see very heavy rains and some significant flooding through parts of southern Alabama, the Florida Panhandle, and maybe even up through Georgia as we go through the next few days. Right now, winds are at 85 miles per hour with Hurricane Sally moving very slowly to the northwest at about two miles per hour. Early tomorrow morning, expected to make landfall around Mobile Bay as a Category 1 hurricane and then move through southern Alabama into Georgia as we head towards the end of the week, moving very slowly still and causing a lot of rain, some storm surge, and of course, a lot of winds. So uh, big problems for the southeastern U.S. For us, it looks like a pretty dry forecast over the next seven days. We'll be checking out what we can expect right here in southeast Texas in just a little bit. All right, thank you, Jeff. Well, Louisiana not in the direct path of the storm any longer, but leaders in New Orleans say they were prepared just in case. The city spent about $14.6 billion on redesigning and reconstructing the levee system. It failed 15 years ago during Hurricane Katrina. The Army Corps of Engineers plans on requesting $3.2 billion from Congress if fall 2021, or in the fall, I should say, to assure that the new levees already sinking will continue to provide their present 100 year level of hurricane protection through 2073. More than 1 million people are protected by those levees. And as always, 12 News is your head headquarters for hurricane awareness and we will be updating all of your information online, on air and on social media. For continuous updates, download the 12 News Now app and turn on your alert notifications. Smith Middle School and Odom Academy in Beaumont were back open today after a staff member tested positive for coronavirus. The schools underwent deep cleaning and disinfecting. According to Beaumont ISD, the employee was last on campus September 10th. All employees who were in contact with that individual have been notified and are required to self-isolate for 14 days. We've seen the devastating effects from the coronavirus, and for one Michigan nursing assistant, those effects are hitting close to home. As Nick Monticelli reports, the woman blames herself for her husband's deteriorating health, but now she's doing something about it. In May, while I was working a COVID unit, I was doing 12 hours that night, and my mask snapped, and within 24 hours, I had full-blown COVID. That is Natisha Fudge, now a former CNA who, as you can tell, has been through a lot. But after contracting COVID-19 at work, Natisha says she gave it to her husband, Christopher, who was admitted to St. John Hospital and then needed a new kidney because of complications. They 
initially told us that he was actually in stage three kidney disease and now we're dealing with seizures and COVID. On top of that, Natisha's mother-in-law also tested positive for the virus. We almost lost him during that time and then his mom, we thought she was about to pass also. So since Natisha gave her husband the virus, this mother of three is giving him a kidney as well. Finding out that his blood type was O positive and then my blood type is O negative, I said that it was only fate because only O can donate to O. But to her, it is a simple fix for their long term. To know that I'm going to have my best friend and partner with me even longer in life, it feels amazing. New at noon, scientists now believe COVID may one day become a seasonal virus similar to the flu. And that's according to a new review published by Lebanese scientists. Although COVID-19 appears to have no seasonal pattern right now, experts say it could evolve over time. However, that's not likely to happen until enough people have been exposed to the virus or vaccinated and we reach a level of herd immunity. A man is behind bars after leaving Beaumont police on a chase in a stolen city vehicle. Police say Roderick Hale used the stolen dump truck to break into Home Depot. Investigators say surveillance video shows two men loading lumber into that stolen truck. After a brief chase on Concord this morning, the 43-year-old was arrested without incident. Hale is charged with unauthorized use of a motor vehicle and fleeing in a motor vehicle. Right now, police are searching for a second suspect. The ban on Chick-fil-A opening up inside the San Antonio airport has come to an end. The city of San Antonio has been ordered to lift the ban. The order comes after the city council banned the restaurant from the airport with a 6-4 to four council vote in March of last year. Councilman Roberto Trevino cited the fast food chain's history of donating to groups opposed to LGBT rights. In a written statement, Texas Attorney General Ken Paxton called it a win for religious liberty. Then in a statement later released by Chick-fil-A, the chain said it no longer plans to open a restaurant inside the airport. Developing at noon, the city of Louisville has reached a settlement with Breonna Taylor's family six months after she was killed inside her home during a police drug raid. NBC News confirming the settlement is in the millions of dollars. It will include a list of police reforms that will address officer accountability and the execution of search warrants. Taylor's mother filed a lawsuit in late April against three officers, accusing them of wrongfully causing her daughter's death. Lawyers for Taylor's family will discuss the settlement at a news conference later this afternoon.